Hi, in a previous video we took a look at designing your own custom LCD and I'll link in that video at the end and down below if you haven't seen it. This is basically a part two follow up to that. It's going to be uh, part two of several parts to come and where we left off before is that we actually uh, had designed our own uh, custom LCD and I've done tutorials on LCDs. I'll also link those at the end as well. Uh, we designed our own, uh, specified our own custom LCD and went off and got a quote and uh, we're currently getting that manufactured. So uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, you don't really have to go to this sort of uh, detail that uh, David's gone to here to specify this particular um, LCD that we're getting for our uh, new micro supply project. Uh, we've color coded all sorts of various things over here. So we gave them this uh, table to fill in here for the uh, pin information and they got reasonably close to what we wanted but we'll have a look at the final uh, data sheet that they sent us. So you don't necessarily have to go to that sort of uh, effort to uh, detailed effort to actually specify your LCD but the more you specify it up front the closer it's going to be to exactly what you want. You could almost design it on the back of a napkin with a sketch and they'll pretty much be flexible enough to uh, do that for you. Um, so the next step is is that we uh, said yep go ahead we uh, paid our hundred and $40, I think it was, 140 US dollars. This includes the tooling charge, and we're going to get five samples, which uh, we haven't got them yet. So that is just ridiculously cheap. I mean, 140 bucks, including the tooling, and five LCDs delivered. It, it, when I was a boy. Anyway, um, this may, this you may not be able to get this low cost if you did say the back of the napkin, uh, you know, type approach. We actually gave them the full DXF, designed it, the actual segments in the full DXF uh, file, and so they probably had you know, very little work apart from actually uh, routing the thing and doing up the data sheet. But if they have to actually design and draw all the segments based on, you know, your napkin sketch or something like that, then they're probably going to charge you extra tooling for the time and effort involved in that. So this uh, second part video is about the data sheet that they've sent uh, back. Because once we send them our uh, drawing for the LCD, then they'll uh, draw it up in their CAD system, whatever it is, uh, and get ready to manufacture it. They will send the data sheet back to us to actually approve. They want us to you know, basically sign off on it and say, yep, go ahead, that's what we want. We're happy with that. Go ahead and manufacture our samples. So let's take a look at that. So this is the data sheet that we've uh, sent out. We have blanked uh, some various uh, things on here and it's a multi-page uh, one as we'll uh, see at the moment, but they've sent back basically the detailed dimensions, um, the individual uh, segments and things like that, the specifications for it's a um, STN, uh, positive mode, one eighth duty cycle, quarter bias, uh, six o'clock viewing direction. I've explained all these uh, specifications in the previous uh, video, uh, operating temperature range, uh, minus 10 to plus 50, uh, operating voltage 3.3, 64 hertz frame rate, transmissive, uh, and the back polarizer is a reflective, so it's going to be a reflective type LCD, i.e. no backlight on this thing. All right, so they've sent the uh, full pin table. This is after they've done all their routing inside there, um, if, which will show the routing in a minute, and this is the entire uh, pin out for the thing, and they're basically got the they pretty much did most of the grouping that we uh, wanted but that will be dependent like I said in the previous um, video like if you've got a segment up in this top left uh, top right hand corner here and you want to connect that segment over to a pin on the bottom right here that's just going to screw up your routing and things like that and then basically not going to be able to uh, accommodate your uh, request for things like that and um, so that we've got the full pin table map in here we've got the uh, 40 pins 20 down each side and uh, you might notice that these lines across here look the min and max here how they've got a line across that and uh, what that means is that you can't turn on those segments individually so it's just like it's the word it's signifying that that's the word min and it's just one segment to turn on the word min. 
and you can see that they've also got that uh, down there for the battery symbol, uh, for example. So they're, they're actually connected together. And like those two uh, decimal points, um, it, well, the colon, like in there for like a time uh, between those individual uh, segments there. So that just signifies that they're uh, tied together. And here's basically their uh, routing drawing. Now, not all data sheets actually will show you this, but they've really gone to town. And uh, like we can't actually zoom in on this, so it's not like the real routing you know the actual uh photo imageable routing path like your gerber files for your pcb for example it's not actually that um and then it actually shows where the segments look it shows that the uh the common over here okay it goes to these uh pins one through to pin eight there they're our common pins and the rest of them are the individual segments but it basically shows you how they all tie together and like it shows that uh this seven segment digit up here for example is all on the one uh line like that and that's how they multiplex and you'll see that reflected in the uh mapping pin mapping and segment mapping table that we uh saw before but that's you know, kind of rather groovy it just shows how they actually do the routing inside something like this and there, you know it, there's a lot of work that goes into this this is a fairly complex custom LCD with lots of segments, lots of pins with eight commons and like 30 odd segments as well. Um, so it's, you know, it's getting up there in terms of being able to route this thing efficiently um, on just the two layers there. And it looks like we've actually had like a PDF rendering type um, error here from AutoCAD or whatever it is, the CAD package that they're uh, rendering from. The sh segments are all showing like all uh, joined together here and we've confirmed with them, yeah, that's obviously not how the final um, LCD is going to look. So they're kind of like just goofed up a little bit there. But uh, as you can see, um, they've supplied this uh, full data sheet for the thing and this is going to match the uh, samples that we're going to get. Okay, so what we're going to need now is uh, some sort of uh, driver a demo board or your final product board, whatever it happens to be, to actually drive this LCD when we get these samples in. As I said, we don't have the samples yet. They're on our way, but we'll get a board uh, manufactured and we'll have something ready to go so that when we get the LCD, we'll be able to plug it in because we're going to need, because this is a quite a complex LCD with eight commons um, and over a hundred uh, segments, we can't just drive it directly with the um, STM32 ARM micro that we're actually looking to use in our final product here so we need obviously to use an LCD uh, driver chip and I've mentioned this previously so we've decided on the uh, Holtec 1622 so let's go take a look at that one the advantage of this is that it basically only needs three lines for the microcontroller it's basically an SPI interface so we have our uh, our clock Mosey and uh, chip select uh, this chipset can actually read the data back out as I'll explain in a minute but we're not using that functionality which is driving the LCD and we don't really care to get any data back that's a really in this particular product and this particular implementation that we're doing here there's just no value in doing that so you might as well save a line so as I'm sure I mentioned in a uh, previous video that there's a trade-off between trying to um, either find a microcontroller, even if you can find one that can support your particular uh, LCD that you're trying to do. In this case, there are microcontrollers available uh, that do have the eight commons and the number of um, segments required to drive this LCD, but they typically push you into a much bigger pin package uh, microcontroller, which usually has more memory than what you need and more other resources and everything else a bigger badder ass micro that you're going to pay a lot more for it so often it's actually cheaper to use a simpler microcontroller with no built-in lcd controller and use an external lcd controller like this holtec one here so this is the holtec ht1622 uh, and it does a bit more than uh, lcd uh, driving as we'll actually see here and it's uh, you know you can even buy it like on AliExpress for less than a dollar in one-off quantity and you know there we've got other sources that can actually get this quite um, cheaply and the it's actually cheaper to get this Holtec driver chip than it is to buy and it, spend the more on the microcontroller to get the model that has all those pins required as I said so it's from a cost uh, point of view it's better and also from a uh, PCB layout point of view as, as well you can actually put the driver chip next to your LCD right next to the pins you can route out the pins properly it might mean you can uh, 
use a two layer board instead of a four layer board for example so those sort of uh, factors can influence the final uh, cost of your design um you know because saving cents here and there kind of matters in uh you know not even uh like high-end uh, consumer type stuff in the millions but sort of at the lower end as well the higher margin that you can uh, get in your product the bomb cost versus the um basically the uh, retail or sale price of it then the better off you're going to be and you can spend money on a better case or better switches or better overlays or you know something else so if you can save money do it where you can uh but also from as i said a layout point of view if your micro your microcontroller can be over on this side of the board up here and your LCD controller can be up on this side and you've only got those three lines going that the SBI bus going between it and the micro might be over here because you might be using the analog to digital converters in it or something else and they might be near your analog uh, parts for example and your LCD can be separated right up here so there's lots of advantages to using a dedicated chip um, and they're often just easy to use you don't have to dick around some of the microcontrollers are quite complicated in the way they drive their LCDs and programming them and things like that so this is quite a reasonable solution. So we're using the HT1622 with eight commons and 32 segments. And this is actually a pretty groovy little uh, part. Not only does it have a watchdog timer and uh, time-based generator, but it's got a, a uh, buzzer generator as well, which we're going to use for, you know, hook up a buzzer to it. And it can actually generate two different frequencies. So that's really good, two kilohertz and four kilohertz. So you can get different uh, tones and stuff like that. Um, so it's very simple uh, to use it. Now the interesting thing about this 1622 is it's actually available in three different packages, a 44 pin LQFP, a 52 pin LQFP and a 64 pin LQFP. Um, and why I hear you ask? Well different uh, sizes for different uh, technology products for example like you might think think that the 64 pin LQFP is bigger but it's actually not it's a seven millimeter by seven millimeter and if you have a look at here at the dimensions E here that's the uh, dimension the pin pitch if you go down here none of these inches rubbish we want millimeters look at this 0.4 millimeters pitch pin pitch what a pain in the ass um 0.5 is quite small 0.4 is starting to get you know really pain in the ass category um but the other ones up here for example the 52 pin is a 14 by 14 millimeter so it's actually uh four times the area than the seven by seven millimeter one uh and the seven by seven is actually one quarter the physical uh size of the other one so you know a huge difference for the same uh chip obviously um some of the pins are not going to be used on the different uh configurations and then the and that one by the way is a one millimeter pitch so there you go if you want to solder those by hand one millimeter geez stevie wonder could solder a one millimeter pitch uh, lqfp no worries um and the 44 pin lqfp up here is once again it's a bit smaller again uh than the 14 by 14 millimeters so if you physically got less board area then uh, you could uh, potentially choose this one and you're a 0 0.8 millimeter pin pitch so it's still quite reasonable so but hey you might not be able to get all of these with the same sort of availability so you may be stuck with the one that you can get but you can come a gutser when you're in your bill of materials if you actually order the wrong part you know you may go to a supplier that says oh yeah i've got i got a ton of those i got ten thousand of those h2 1622s i could do a good deal on them and they send them to you and you find that you get the completely wrong pin pitch and you're just screwed so yeah you've got to be careful this is where you have to specify the exact uh configuration where is it let's have a look actually this one's further interesting in that it doesn't give you an exact bomb part like a, a like a order in part number on here to actually get this right so you would have to actually specify it and double and triple check with your supplier that you're actually getting the right one normally in data sheets like this there's like a table that actually um you know gives you the exact orderable part number so you cannot make a mistake you know with the extra digits so it'll be h2 ht 1622 with you know some weird digits on the end um to order that particular package but in this case they don't actually have that which is really kind of annoying ah uh, whole tech anyway just watch out for your um your pin pitch 
on your packages and what type of package you got because if you go to BGA for example that's a, a different uh, might change your assembly requirements somewhat um, so that can uh, add to cost and yield and um, all sorts of things like that so this is uh, quite neat. We have pad coordinates. We don't care about all that. But here's the pins uh, for the sucker. So we've got our chip select. Uh, we've got our read pin, uh, which, as I said, we're not actually connecting in this particular circuit because we don't need to read back uh, the RAM contents and things like that. Only if you want to store, uh, use the RAM inside this chip to store the data so that you don't have to store it inside your microcontroller. That can be handy if you've got a real tiny microcontroller that's memory uh, limited and stuff like that. You can use the mapping, the RAM mapping inside the uh, LCD driver chip and then to hold all that data and then just read it back if you need to manipulate it or do whatever, read it back later. So, but wait, you don't have to use that. You can just push out the data. Uh, so the right pin, the data, which is a bi-directional uh, thing. Um, we've, we've got power, um, oscillate um, the uh, from an external clock source. So we've got a clock on that. Um, and the LCD operating voltage, which is um, you generally hook up. I'll show you the example circuit in a minute. You just generally hook it up to a pot there so you can adjust it or a digital pot if you want to adjust it digitally. Um, and there's three or uh, four, three unconnected uh, pins there. So let's go down and have a look at uh, it's got timing diagrams and all sorts of things. Uh, it's got watchdog which can send there's an interrupt pin as well which can interrupt uh, your microcontroller. That might be handy for uh, various system applications. We won't go into that. And there's the example application circ and this is it's patented. They make you aware of that on every single page. Thank you very much. And you just put a variable resistor. Um, it's basically just a pull up. So you can put a fixed resistor or a pot in there. It's typically like a 10K pot or something. We've got our uh, piezo buzzer on there. Make sure it's a, actually a piezo transducer because there's a difference between a buzzer and a transducer. A uh, piezo transducer is just a transducer. There's no built-in oscillator. So it needs the oscillator built in to either your microcontroller or this particular thing. But a buzzer actually has the oscillator built in. So all you've got to do is apply 3.3 volts, for example, and output logic high on your uh, microcontroller and it starts to buzz at the predetermined frequency. The good thing about the piezo is that you can basically drive it at any frequency you want, so you can get different tones and whatnot, whereas uh, that's what this chip actually supports, 2 kilohertz and 4 kilohertz tones. But if you're driving your piezo directly with your microcontroller, then you could, in theory, just drive it at any frequency. You could sweep it, produce tones, and play music, and do all sorts of wonderful, weird and wonderful stuff. Make it talk? I don't know. Maybe. How <laughs> Would a piezo sound decent? You'd need a decent uh, uh, DAC on there to do that anyway. It's a non sequitur. Um, so that's that's all there is to it. And then you just hook the LCD directly up to the common and segment drivers. It handles all the bias in because the bias in for a multi-segment LCD is actually quite complicated for an eight common one like this. And as I've mentioned in uh, previous videos, although I probably have to do a dedicated video on multiplexed uh, LCD driving, it's quite complicated. They're actually multi-voltage levels like this. So this is, uh, for example, a common, this is a, a just a uh, microchip application uh, node here. It's got quite some decent information. But there are all these different voltage levels in here. And your LCD driver has got to be able to generate all these different levels because as I've mentioned before if you uh, the whole idea is that you have effectively over time you want to have a net DC level of zero on your LCD otherwise it could uh, potentially damage your LCD so that's what these uh, dedicated drivers um, actually take care of all this they generate the bias voltages they do everything else beautiful you don't have to worry about it and for all you math nerds out there, let's go and have a look at this. I try to say math, math, like we're supposed to say in Australia, but I can't say it. My tongue just doesn't let me do it. So I have to cop out and use the American math, math. Um, <laughs> you can actually, there's formulas to calculate uh, what's called the discrimination ratio, which is basically your, you know, calculating the DC uh, values, your RMS values in there of on and off segments. And look, it can get quite complicated for a seven segment, for a seven common um, LCD like that. So, you know, it's it, like I said, if you want to uh, 
uh, if you want to try and drive the LCD yourself using your own circuitry, this is the, all the sort of stuff you have to do. Whereas this is why you use a dedicated LCD driver chip, either the Holtec one which we've got here, or ones that are built in, multi-segment, multi-common ones that are built into your microcontrollers. They handle all this stuff and it's all taken care of for you. Oh, wackers! And it could even get more complicated. You might have to like bypass them with some caps as well. So that's, you know, quite significant added uh, components to your PCB. It doesn't really cost a huge amount, but there's a uh, cost in terms of assembly time of placing the parts, bill of materials and all that sort of stuff, not to mention the uh, component space on your PCBs. But the whole tech we've got, um, it doesn't need any of this. It generates it all internally. Brilliant. So there you have it. That's just a uh, sort of like a follow-up video, an intermediate step uh, required to get your custom LCD manufactured. So hopefully in the third part of this custom LCD uh, video series, we'll get the real samples back. We'll power them up, see how they work. So if you like that video and if you like the series, please give it a big thumbs up because that always helps a lot. As always, discuss down below evblog.com links and all that sort of stuff. You can support me on Patreon links always down below all that youtube stuff bell icon do that catch you next time